Hello, and welcome to my very first tutorial on the Essential Engine. Uh, I've been looking at this engine for a long time now, and most, more specifically looking at the Enesis source code. Uh, so over the next few weeks, what I'd like to do is help guide everybody through how it's set up, how it works, and how you can extend the code that already exists into your own projects, and maybe learn a thing or two about game programming and MMO programming and kind of best practices. Uh, I think the source code's amazing. I think Essential did a great job here. I don't have a lot of experience with this, but I'm very impressed the more and more I learn about it. So what I'm going to be covering today very specifically is just how the server manages worlds and areas, uh, how it updates all the clients, and how the clients work with maintain maintaining the world and areas. And uh, also at the end, what I'm going to do is show you how, if you'd like, how you can load a height map in that is created from the Essential 2.0 editor into Enesis so that you can use it to generate worlds. Uh, what is not covered is the C++ programming language at all, or Essential, Essential Script, uh, the code editor of the world, how to use it. Uh, any other part of the nice client, I haven't gone to the client yet, although I will be making a few tutorials about that. Server compression and saving will not be covered in this although I hope to at some point do a tutorial on that as well. Account management and also, this is not cover, for instance, this is important, any objects, actors, grass, material, anything other than the height map right now. Although it should be fairly trivial after this to start loading those in as well. Um, this tutorial is just focused on loading a height map in from the editor into Enesis. That's all. And obviously disclaimer, I am not affiliated with Essential. I probably will be misstating a lot of things, and I apologize for that in advance. And uh, this is no, by no means comprehensive. I just hope to help be out a little bit by sharing my knowledge with you. So, kind of jumping right in here, I want to first explain how Essential works and how it basically manages worlds and areas by default. So, jumping right into it. Um, this is my very crude diagram of a Essential world. Uh, picture this as the entire world object. Each of these boxes will be considered an area. Now what's beautiful about Central is an area contains everything you'd ever want to know. It contains objects which can be anything from doors to grass to buildings to caves, players, objects, characters, animations. Everything is contained within one area which is these boxes. So as you can see my little characters here are in different areas. He has some grass, some trees, houses. Now, as your character moves through the world, the engine automatically takes care of loading and unloading all of these areas. So, as these two become closer, they'll become what's called neighbors. And at that point, they'll exchange data and say, I'm here, my position, my rotation, all that stuff is shared and managed for you automatically in the engine itself. Now, as this is a beautiful kind of uh, situation. If you look at the uh, essential MMO source, source code, it leverages this model greatly. Now the one downside with that is uh, that how the essential MMO works is that each client stores a copy of the world. So every single client that logs in has this world on the local machine of the user. And all it really does is manage the position and action of each actor or character. So as this character moves throughout the world, it translates that position to the server and the server disseminates that information to all the clients. And if you attack it, you know, an inventory, all that is managed by, by the server. But essentially the world itself is managed by each individual client. So obviously the quick limitation there is that you can't do much with the world because once it's saved the client, it's static and it exists. All the server does is manage the position and a few other things. So that's great for beginners, but if you really want to do uh, an in-depth MMO, you need to be able to store the, the world itself on the server, which is what Enesis does beautifully uh, and kind of why I want to make this tutorial. So Enesis takes this world design and basically customizes it to, be, to work with a client-server relationship where the server is managing the entire world. Um, so in my next diagram, we'll kind of start going through how the Anesis server manages all these connections. I've stuck to four basic flows here, 
uh, that we'll describe in a second. Uh, but let's kind of jump into these, and I'll be bringing examples out from the central itself, so we can kind of go through each of these. So as I mentioned with the central is what it does is take that generic world structure and area structure and breaks down its own custom version. So this is why worlds created in the editor don't work in Ionesis because it's broken down into a different uh, mode than the general world. So I'll try and get past the boring bits as fast as possible but we, ha we can't start too far until, until we understand uh, what Ionesis overloads from the standard world model. Uh, so looking at this, um, the three most important things that Enus overloads is world, area, and height map. So the world object is overloaded with its own custom version, same with area and same with height map. So the world container as you saw in the previous model over here, it really just contains a lot of areas and in Enus that's not any different. It contains uh, a height map, it contains, or a reference to a height map, it contains a grid of areas, which you'd expect, which we can see here, and it also contains an uh, initiation function, as well as a get area function and a get height function, or sorry, change height function, which we'll get into later. Now, this grid of areas is not the standard essential editor, it's area, it's, in, it's the custom area here. So, it's a pointer to the world, it creates its own version of this new height map it overloads, it also stores a reference to all the clients that are in that area and a very handy function called uh, get height map or uh, HM height. Uh, but the real power is all in the, the uh, height map 2 data structure that's created in Anesis. And it stores a byte array, double byte, uh, uh, double 2D array of bytes called height, which is basically that, the image height map. Uh, it also creates a version, which is really handy for, for passing updates to clients. Uh, and a compressed version of itself so that it doesn't have to read, it can send a compressed version all the time without having to recompress. So these three pieces together uh, make it so that Enesis works very seamlessly with transferring very little data and uh, it's a very clean, clean way of doing things. Also very important is the client and the client game functions which we'll get into uh, in just a little bit but these manage passing all the information from the server to the clients and when to do that. So this gets a little technical, I don't want to get too much into this just yet. What I really want to jump into is kind of my diagram of the four major functions of the Essential uh, Unisys source code server. And again, this is just a server. So there's a server start, there's a client connect, a client update position, and a height map update. These are the four major pieces that the server takes care of with regards to height map management. So the first important one is server start. So when the server starts up for the first time, what it does is call the initiate world function, and that world is an initiate world function calls set areas and load world. What set areas does is basically creates all the empty reference holders for the both the area and the height map. So it creates a height map with all 128 height values, which is the, the basic level for Enesis. Everything starts at 128 uh, and goes up and down from there. So the Set world areas just creates that. Same thing is called low air load areas, uh, which is this function that looks at the storage folder and areas and finds anything that's saved from a previous instance of the server when it was started. So whenever you shut down a server and make edits, it saves it to disk and loads it back when it starts up again. So if you've made any add any blocks or changed any heights, that's all uh, saved in a custom file format. What load world does is load those in. Uh, so it sets it to be a previous value. And after that, server's online as far as the height map goes. So there's nothing else. It's very simple. It sets the areas first in memory and then loads the ones from, from the disk. Very, very simple. Um, the next piece, obviously, is a client will connect to the server. And the first thing client connect does is call a client.entergame and it sets the old position of the client. So wherever the, the, the client logged off is where it logs back in at. If it doesn't exist, it puts it at zero, zero. And uh, the next thing it does is call client to update areas. What this will do is whenever a client connects, it sends every area straight to the client. So it's with this CS area data call, and it identifies which areas the client would desire based on its location. So 
you know, it loads all the areas that are within vision of the client and sends it straight to the client. Uh, the client then loads all the areas and instances and adds that client's reference to all the areas. So the server knows in each area which clients are there. And then that's it. Client's on and they can start walking around and, and doing their thing. And once they start walking around, this function, uh, character position update, gets called every time the character moves with this uh, enum value. What the server does is check, does this position, is this position any further than a constant variable area update distance? And kind of jumping into a synth now really quickly, the constants file shows you that the area distance update is 32. So every time the character moves 32 uh, units, which he calls meters in this, in this instance, but it's basically 32 height map values, uh, it sends an update to the server. And when that happens, the server says, uh, no, he hasn't, which is all good, keeps going, or if he has, it calls the update areas function. And what that does is check to see if there's any desired areas based on its new, the client's new location. So, can I see a new area that I need to get loaded, yes or no? If there is, what the server does is just send a reference to that area's version ID, or the UID of the area. This is important because it doesn't actually send the area data yet, it just says, hey, there's an area that needs to be updated and here's which area it is. What it then does is wait for the client to send a request for that area's data, which the client does with message CS area data. And that passes obviously the memory uh, allocation for the areas, and then then the server sends the areas. So once that is received, it sends the area up the actual data of the areas to the client, and then the client updates all the areas. So it's a very simple process and it's clean in that it only sends the references and waits for the client to actually send the memory location that it needs to send the area to. So it's a very clean system for updating when the character moves around. The last and most interesting is the height map update. So this happens when the player clicks up or down on the height map with the, with the dig tool. So what it does is call CS set height uh, and change height is called within the server. And what's what really happens on the back end, and I won't get too much into the server side, or so the client side, but what it does is take a 7x7 seven seven snapshot of the height map at the location of the client um, and then sends it to the server. So just I have a little diagram here. So imagine you're a client here in this and this is one area. If he's standing here, it pulls a 7x7 seven seven reference to the height map and then sends it straight to the server. And this, what the server does is um, it checks how much that height has changed. The client right now, if in the vanilla version, changes the height map with a negative 8 to 8, and it, it's, a, it's a curve from there, so it's 8, 5, 3, 1, 0, based on the height, so it creates a nice little mound that you see in, in, the, in the application, or digs a mound in it. Uh, and that's all done from the client side and passes the, the value straight to the server. And the server calls area to height map and change height is a very important function in that custom area, uh, and that custom height map that's created in the server, so this function calls an update to this height map called change height and all it does is simply take that value and set it as a new height and then what it does is it makes a list of clients that are in that area which came from here again because the client updates the, the client list for each area and distributes it to every single client so now all the clients have the new 7x7 image and the position where the image was and it just plops it right into what it is, to where uh, it, its world and then updates it so it's a very quick, very clean update with a small 7x7 image that's easy to distribute to all the clients, and they all get updated. So that's that's the basic flow of how it works. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, another important thing about this passing of the references is that this is a very vanilla case where the client's in one area, but what happens sometimes, obviously, is the client is straddling multiple areas, or four areas. So every time this happens, the client cycles through each of the areas and updates it one at a time. So in this case, the the server will update this area first with just these height map references and then it will distribute that to the clients and then do it for this one as well. So it'll cycle through at most four areas to update and send those updates to the client. So it'll do this piece of the curve and this piece of the curve and this piece and this piece all separately and then piece them together and then it will send each update to the clients. So it's very important to remember that whenever you're doing this kind of client server relationship within uh, Ascenthal that areas are very, very important, and if it's any chance that the actor is 
within multiple areas, you have to manage that separately, in which case this does, or in the essential engine.